I'm recording. Are you? Are you recording? We don't have to. We don't really have to tell it because if we count it off and we do it, and it'll just be that we're recording. You're dumb. Because every time I no, have to I cut that you. out after when I'm editing, I have to cut that out. Every no, but time. you don't cut it out. You just leave all the shit in. So whatever no, we say gets recorded. Not always. I sometimes cut things out where I'm like, I don't like what Rachel said there, so I'm going <laughs> to take it out. But more of me. Stretch it out. Stretch <laughs> it out. Longer. <laughs> I more, slow myself down. More me time. Hello. I slow myself down so I can so I can hear myself talk for longer periods Just of time. Cut out Rachel's voice. It's all Mikey no. all the time. No, no, I, I leave your voice in every, every once in a while. Show. Oh, I'm Mikey Pedroza. I'm funny. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Are you, everyone loves my jokes. Hey, ha -ha. Rachel. <laughs> hey, Rachel. Hi. Why, why are you so grumpy? <laughs> I don't know. Well, by, uh, Brett's bike got stolen today. Oh, I know. does that mean he can't go to work anymore? He's yeah, gotta he's got to stay home He's got to stay home. He can't go to work anymore. <laughs> That sucks. I I'm know. sorry. Yeah. Uh, by the way, welcome to the oh, bright side, everybody. Welcome to the bright side. With Mikey and Rachel. And sad I'm Mikey. Rachel. I'm Grouchy Rachel. Grump and this is a pod Rachel. This is the bright side with Mikey and Grumpy Rachel. And this is a podcast where we talk about Lindy Hop stuffs and anything else we want to talk about. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and I think I think Rachel is feeling a little bit off today, I'm but it doesn't matter guys. because because I'm a little, I'm a little tired. Oh, uh, and this, so you're going to be the be one great. who's carrying it, A, A. No, I'm, no, there's going to be no carrying. We're just going to be a pile of goo on the ground or in oh. the ears of people listening. That sounds great. I like that. Yeah, it's going to be good. How Why are you so are grouchy? You? Well, okay, so Brett's uh, bike got stolen, which was a big old fat bummer, and then I spent all morning, like, so we had, I had to report it, you know. So I spent like all morning trying to call the LAPD to, like, report a missing bike, because sometimes they can find it. I guess apparently it's common for, like, homeless people to steal bikes, and then there's, like, a quote-unquote bike shop along the river where they sell bikes to other people. Oh, shit, that's crazy. Yeah, right? Uh, it's a uh, whole according, system. According to my friend. I, don't, I mean, it, <laughs> I, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me if it's true, but... <laughs> it I, this is like this was the first time I had heard of anything like that. So I, lo I, I love I love that you're like like a friend told me a friend told a me a friend told me that there's like secret organization of homeless people that sell it's because bikes she's at a running bike it. shop it, down she, by the river. She started the bike shop, <laughs> so I had to report it. But then like all these numbers for the police department weren't in service anymore. They like I don't, or they weren't picking up and. Classic, classic so LA. It was just like department. the runaround, <laughs> and then it took forever. Like when I finally did get connected to someone, it took forever for them to like take down the report for a bike for a bicycle. You know, I yeah. don't. Know. It was lame. It sucked. Well, and what really sucked is that uh, the intercom, like the the intercom for our front gate, wasn't working. And so usually, like if you don't have your keys, you can just like punch in a code, and then the the gate will open. Sure. But for some reason it wasn't working because we had had like some other uh, work being done in like another part of the building. And the wires were left loose. It's like a whole thing. But it wasn't working. So what I think is someone put like a brick to keep the gate propped open. And then yeah. someone must have come in, gone down to the garage, found the bike. And then it was just like, whoop, take the bike with me. Adios, amigos. Wow, that sucks. Libomer. Yeah, that sucks, man. But are you, okay. are you, was did he, was he using the bike for go to work and stuff? Yeah, he uses the bike to go to work. Ah, that I sucks. know. Oh well. Oh well, it's just a bike. It's just a thing. It wasn't yeah. it? Wasn't us? Yeah. How are next you? Time, next time they'll steal you. Oh my God! I hope not. Oh Jesus! No, don't even just say like, that. Brett and I just, just like. We just we just finished watching the keepers. Have you seen that? I am. Do you know what it is? On seeing it. Oh yeah, my god! Yeah, I know what it is on no. the Netflix. It's so good on the Netflix. It's, it's uh terrifying. Yeah, of course. But the story is so good, and there's like so many pieces to the puzzle. Whoa, it's yeah. so well made. I was just 
I mean, I haven't, I haven't even seen like to make a murder, make a murder yet because I'm like, I don't want to, like, I don't want to like taint myself with like, I mean, I know that's there and I know what it's about and I, like, it won't surprise me, but it's one of those things where I'm just like, no, but it will. But if I, if I never, if I never watch it, then I'll never have like that thing of knowing. And I could just say like, no, I don't know. It's like, it's like, I feel like I'm the only person in the world who didn't watch two girls of one cup. Like I've never seen that either. There, that's why we're friends. High five. High five. Virtual, virtual high five. Virtual high five. Uh, but I hope, I hope, I mean, I hope they find it somehow. But uh, your bike, uh, your Brett's bike. I mean, but it's if not, I mean, I mean, you guys can always get another one. Yeah, that's just true. Walk, just wander on down to the Walmart. Wander on down to Panorama City to the Walmart. Wally <laughs> World. Wally, 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 Wally World. <laughs> Hello, how are you? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Now, now we're Hello. now we're five minutes in. Five minutes in. Now we can begin. Now Hello. we can begin. I'm in a better <laughs> mood. How's it going? <laughs> it's good. It's. Good. I'm tired as fuck. I just did six weeks in a row. What? What happened? So what happened last night? You sent me a little green face emoji, like you were throwing up. Oh, we were stuck in the air. They were like making like circles circling? around Madrid. Oh, yeah, gross! For like an extra two hours, so a two-hour flight became four hours, and then and then we and you and got down, landed. and you were like, "Ooh, time to throw up." No, it, it was it was just it was just one of those things where I was just like, "Ugh, I'm so tired," and like it, I felt sick. Yeah. But when I got when I got in the, uh, and I was like, make it even worse. I was like, I had to get in the metro, which oh, could, yeah. could be worse, could be but not so worse. But luckily, late at night, there's not a lot of people on there, so like, I like just like. <laughs> Fell asleep on the on the on the first train and then like woke up like exactly when I needed to and I like ran out and like uh. made it to my next train and like fell asleep on the next train and like woke up and like ran out and like I walked home like a crack fiend looking for crack like uh. <laughs> like <laughs> like my my little my little chub, my little chub, my little chubby legs just made, making me move. <laughs> oh yeah and um oh and baby then, uh, and then I finally made it home and I pretty much fell asleep immediately yeah it was awesome. And then I slept for a solid 11 hours, probably. Oh, dang. Yeah. That's a long time. Yeah. And, and, I, and I still feel a little off just because yeah. of that. Like that, that. I mean, I got enough rest, so I feel awake. But my body's like, I hate you. And, my, and I'm saying to my body, I was like, I hate you. Also, I've hurt myself. My, my foot is like completely fucked. Like, What'd I you do? Put a lot of weight onto it. I stepped off a one-inch step. <laughs> okay. I mean, <laughs> seriously, come on. It wasn't even dancing. I know it was. Get your was head out of your on. ass, Mikey. It, it. I, I mean, if I could fit my my own head in my ass, I, we, I would have other problems. First off, because this thing is gigantic. It's so big. Let's not even it's talk so about big. that. <laughs> and 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 uh, and then, I, I, I'm pretty sure it happened in, in Lithuania. And I stepped off like a little step to step onto the dance floor. And I remember like, well, I slipped. And I was like, oh, that feels funny in my foot. And then I like danced a little bit. And the next morning, like my foot was like this big. <gasps> really? And, like, yeah. And I could, I was like, that hurts more than normal. You know, how, like, you know, sometimes you, when you dance like a shit ton and the next day, like your foot's a little sore. Yeah. Like, I was like, hmm. Oh, I, I got long. lots of feet problems. So I can tell you all about yeah. that. Oh, I've heard a whole podcast about a you and Kelly and your podcast. foot problems. A whole podcast. And, and so, and so I was, I was just like trying to like do my best and like it, I spent like two weeks trying to figure it out. And then like, a f I told a friend of mine and my friend was like, I know this like physical therapist that can like help you out or like masseuse that can help you out. And I was like, great. Okay. And then he comes by and he's like, he like looks, he like took off my shoes and he's, he looks at it. He's like, oh yeah, I know what you did. And he, he just started he's like He's like, you wailing. slipped off of a one inch step, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. And you're like, yeah, how did you know? <laughs> And then he and then he looked at my pinky toe and then licked it and he was like in Lithuania. <laughs> <laughs> and you were like, oh my gosh, it's all better. Yeah, it's all better. Also, get out of my house, you licking toe person. Wait, so uh, what? Did, so what did he say about your foot? Well, he he just said like all like the m muscles and fibers were all fucked up and like some of them were out of place and so he's was like, that the term he, he used? Fucked up. Beat. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he was like, bang. Beat the shit out of my foot for like an hour and I was like. Oh, this is horrible! And then afterwards, I was like, "Oh, this is amazing." <laughs> Were you able and, to and fit your sh your foot into your shoe? Uh, no, actually, that's the thing. It's like for a long time, like I wasn't able to. So the night before he came over, uh, I went to the pharmacy and I got like anti-inflammatory cream. Yeah. And they asked me. They were like, "They're like, do you want normal or do you want like extreme?" And I was like, extreme. I looked down at my foot. I look. I looked down at my foot. I looked down at my foot. 
And I like looked at my shoe. It was like untied. And I was like, extreme. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, man. And, and then... And then and then uh, I came home and I like put it up on my on my chair and like put some pillows up and and like fell asleep like that with like like half my body on the bed and half my body off the bed because it was like on the chair next to my bed. Oh. And so and I put this cream on and the next day it, the swelling went down a ton. So I was like, okay, that's cool. You were like, it and was then, extreme. Yeah, it really was. And then the next day, the next day the guy came by and he just beat the shit out of my foot. And my legs, oh, it was so cool. Like, I, I hate massages, by the way. I really? I hate when people come up. Yeah, I hate when people come up to me and, like, start massaging my shoulders or my back or something. You know when people do that. And I'm like, ha ha, thanks. And I'm just, like, fucking flicking their hands off. I'm like, that doesn't feel good at all. But what about, like, a paid massage? Like, do you not like those nope. either? Really? Not really. Wait. Not really. Because most, most of the time they focus on my back. And I'm like, I don't have anything there for you to, for you to like, undo. Like, all my shit is on my legs and my, and my feet. Well, and you can tell them that. Stuff. I know, but I don't want them to touch it. But that's the thing. It's like I would rather just do it when when they come by. Like the guy, the guy who gave me, he's like, he's like, he's like stretching me out and like doing all these things and like making me put pressure on it on different on different spots of my whole legs. And he's like, Jesus, your legs are huge. And I was like, uh, thanks. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, he's like, no, I. He's like, I mean, in a good way. Like you, you're obviously a dancer. You've obviously been on your feet like all your life. I was like, yeah. Before that, I was playing a lot of soccer. And he's like, oh, yeah, like you have a ton of muscle, like all in this area. And like usually people don't unless they're an athlete. And I'm like, well, I'm a sort of athlete. What area is he talking about? <laughs> the, the mostly around the knees, mostly around the knees and my calves. OK. Uh, uh, also my penis. <laughs> I just this is just sounding very sexual. That's the other thing. That's the other reason why I don't like massages, because sometimes they make me sexually confused. Really? <laughs> yeah, like not not like I don't like gay or whatever. I don't bullshit things like that. No, it's more like someone is making me feel so good. Like I feel like do I do I turn around and kiss them? Like that's that's how similar the feelings are when when it's done really really well. Like uh, I've only had like a couple massages in my life where they felt really good, and when they do, like it crosses that line of like this feels too good. Like I'm 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 feeling I'm feeling overwhelmed with emotion here. Like I should turn around and make out with you now? Question mark. That has never happened to me. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like when you're not touched so often as I am. <laughs> <laughs> when you never get touched like me. Yeah, exactly. Awesome, awesome, beautiful Mikey. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's 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 where I'm at. Uh, I'm back in. I have a weekend off. Ooh. This weekend is off. I'm gonna go see Pirates of the Caribbean. I'm gonna go see the Mummy. And then I'm going to wait for another two weeks till I can actually see Wonder Woman, which is fucking killing oh, me. Oh, look at you. But, I, I mean, you know, you know I'm a giant nerd for the fucking superheroes yeah. and whatnot. Yeah, 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 and you, totally, and, totally. And, you don't, you, and then you don't totally love him. I know you told me before you hate Chris Evans and you hate Captain America. You under, don't understand it at all. I don't hate Chris Evans. Fucking, like, it's not like he's I'm a bad person. I'm fucking calling you out because that, you fucking said that before. I, like, don't I like hate Captain, his acting. I don't like Captain America and his <laughs> acting is not good. It's poo-poo. <laughs> I'll poo-poo on poo-poo. it. There we go. There not, we go. Not, like I, not like I'm any better, but... You know, I mean, the, it, may, it might be. I don't know. We'll find out. We'll in two find years. out pretty soon here. <laughs> when you're when you're in a Marvel movie with Chris that's Evans. right, <laughs> right. Um, but oh so so then so then I'm gonna I'm gonna go watch the. Um, it sucks because like usually I get to see it before a lot of these movies like before the U.S. does. Yeah. And and I'm like yeah I just saw it I'm like yeah and and now this time I have to wait three weeks after the movie has already opened in the United States and I'm like fuck. Oh man. But the man. cool thing is. The cool thing is I'm going to watch it with a friend of mine who's from uh, Tel Aviv, Israel, and Gal Gadot is Israeli. Yeah. And and she's like, oh, my God. She told me today. She's like, she's like, I heard about, and the first thing I thought was like, I'm going to go see it with Mikey because he'll tell me all the cool things behind it, and I'll tell him all the cool things behind her. And I'm like, yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah, so it was, it was really cool. So she's like, I'm going to bring my flag. And I'm like, I'm going to hide behind it. It should be <laughs> fine, but I'm going to hide behind it. I'm going to hide behind the flag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. Um, cool, cool. But yeah, that's 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 where I'm at. Nice. Uh, I guess we'll just jump into this thing here. Shall we jump into the thing? Yeah. Before we get started into our main topic of the day, I'd like to give a little update on the uh, J and J renaming. Oh my god. 
I know. I just want. I just want to like bring up the fact that thanks for everybody who listened to it. A lot of people also commented on that. That was really cool. Yeah. Sent us little messages, and we got a few messages that that like really were really cool, like based off of our conversation. And these next, hopefully, these next two podcasts are going to be uh, some based off of those comments that we got from other people. Uh, but before we go into that main topic, Yahudi posted a a results type post on on their blog. And they got 386 votes for the alternative names of the Jack and Jill. Oh, they did. And they got, yeah, they did. And they, they basically comes down to like the top three or the top one, two, three, four, five, six, the top five, Mix and Match, J&J, the Social Division, the Carrie Competition, and Jess and Joe. And then there was an other. Uh, but the top couple ones, let's see, Mix and Match got 195 votes. Okay. The Social Division got 52 votes. Okay. J&J got 49. The Carry Competition slash the Carry Switch, 16. And Jess and Joe got 11. And then there was a ton of other ones as well. They got a couple... Um, a couple of uh, votes in there. But I think... Uh, nobody, I think di- nobody, really nobody voted for the Poop in Your Pants contest? <laughs> no one voted for the Poop your, in Your Pants contest. Yours truly's <laughs> contribution... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. That that I would be a winner of cuz I already I that because we'll talk about because we'll talk about that story another seriously, day. Seriously, every time I poop in my pants. I, but I I have pooped in my pants in front of people, in front of an on stage in Seattle, but we'll get there another day. No, oh no, we have to get there oh, now. No. no, no, we'll get we'll get there another day. It's okay. Oh, it's okay. Oh, I just man. like to tease you all. One time I Tune in next time. One time Tune I thought time. I was going to poop in my pants right before a competition. I but I was wearing a dress, so it would have been in my bloomers. It was scary. Uh, <laughs> another, another like great contribution from <laughs> Rachel. Do God I, damn it! What the hell were you thinking, do, Dollenberg? Do boy, you shouldn't have eaten dinner before the competition. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Ooh, um, you know, fucking. I fucking it's like love a, you. it's uh, like it never ends. It like it, ne- it, ne- it the poo poo never ends. The poo poo never ends. It's the like the poo poo never ends. You know how does Kim Jong Un do it? I don't know. <laughs> it disappears into the it's, magic of his. It's ether. a mystery. It's a mystery to me. So and then and then at the end of this uh, Jack and Jill thing is uh, a number of of uh, prominent Lindy Hop events, national Lindy Hop events, um, have begun to change the name, mostly vying for social social. Co- social, sorry, I'm sorry, I missed that. The are you, are you reading division. something? Yeah, the social okay. division, and I mean, if you were paying attention, I told you I was reading the blog. Uh, if you were actually listening, I would have told you that if I was you reading were, it. You know, I if you were actually listening, so you would listen that I wasn't listening. If this has got, it's going to work. You, you gotta listen. I, no, listen. So a lot of dance <laughs> contests have already <laughs> changed their names, changed the Jack and Jills to social dance contest or uh, mix and match. Uh, I'm I gotta be honest, like uh, mix and match didn't really hit me, and then now I'm like, listen, I'm like, I hear it a bunch, and I'm like, oh, that's not bad. But also like now social dance competition, like all these things, I don't care. I don't, oh yeah, I don't, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't care what you change it to, but I, I love that people are giving it a thought, and that's what matters the most. And if they make some kind of execution. Go for it, and and uh, I mean, ESDC. Don't know if that's ever going to happen again. International Lindy Hop Championships uh, changed it. Lindy Fest changed it. Camp Jitterbug, Southern Swing Challenge, Camp Hollywood, Montreal Swing Riot, uh, Seattle Lindy Extravaganza, Nevermore Jazz Ball, and yeah, I mean that's a, that's a ton, and I'm sure there's a ton more that have already changed it. Smaller totally or bigger. It doesn't doesn't matter. The thought is what counts, and the thought is how do I how do we how can we be more inclusive? And I think this is a big Big strive forward, um, just in making sure. I mean, y- none of us may ever feel this. A name of something will will ever take us away from something. But knowing that there's people out there that that look at a name of something that we hold in our in our dance community so close, like a dance contest like this, drives some people away. Like by changing that, if that makes them feel better, like that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, and, for and, sure. Uh, and the other thing is also like make actually bringing light to where the contest actually came from from Jack Carey and and and, and bringing light to that historical fact I think is more important than name uh, so that covers both ends that covers the end of like the historical reference of Jack and Jill for the dance itself and 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 then like inclusivity for everybody else like I think yeah this may not solve any problems but you know what it's a good step towards solving these problems 
For sure. I believe. For sure. I truly believe that. Uh, but yeah, uh, shall we move on to the main topic? We shall. Oh, here we go. Why don't you go ahead? And, we got a comment from a, a listener, and we'd love to tackle this this whole whole thing, and then uh, see what uh, what happens. Let's do it. Go yeah, for it. Yeah. Okay. So the uh, comment was from Timothy McMahon. Hi, Timothy. He says. Hi. <laughs> he says, "Hey, topic idea for your next podcast: How to keep dancing in a small scene that doesn't inspire you." We recently moved to a small town in Idaho. It has a small scene with some instructors originally from ABQ. Albuquerque, what oh what, 505. He didn't say that. I'm saying that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they are decent <laughs> dancers. The live jazz scene here is awesome, but people, but getting people to commit to improving their dancing is hard. Coming from uh, the L.A. scene and other large cities, I find it hard to want to go out. So, so yeah, thank thank you, Timothy, for submitting that. First off, yeah. First I of really all, wonder who these I really wonder who these ABQ instructors are. I wonder yeah. if they're your ex students or something. Uh, no, their names are Rick and Meredith. You know uh, who they are. I, knew I know. It. I know who so they cool. are. Uh, they were scene leaders in the scene when I first started dancing, uh-huh. and they uh, they were like at the time they were. Uh, they had started like a dance on Saturdays and they were teaching some classes and Rick in particular was like very instrumental in, uh, I don't want to say teaching necessarily, but like guiding, like helping me learn how to dance. Like he would, yeah. da- he would dance with me a lot and, and challenge me. No, that's cool. And they were like super nice, super great people. Uh, and he's like a, oh, what is he? A uh, person. He's like a super fancy scientist. <laughs> uh, a super fancy. Super fancy scientist. scientist. Person. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Uh, like a nuclear scientist or something. Whoa. Yeah. A smarty it, McSmarty. Yeah. He, it's like a really big deal. Um. So they moved to Idaho. I think it's called Idaho Falls. I don't remember. Uh-huh. Anyway, they and they've been like trying to cultivate the dance scene there. And the last that I spoke with them, which was a couple of years ago now, they said that things were like going okay and they have a dance once a month, but it's not like it's hard to get the scene to be any any more Bigger. substantial. Yeah, any right. s- yeah. Is it do you know if it's like a like a college scene? Is it a college town? I don't know. Uh, okay. All I know is that it's significantly smaller than Albuquerque, which is already a pretty oh, small wow. town. Right, right, right. Uh, and I think they only have dances like a couple times a month. Right. I mean, I mean that's that is a tough part, right? Like, how do you get it out there? How do you how do you get a dance in, more in the face of people? And I feel this is this is the thing that. I don't know if it's a hinderment or not. It just happens to be a different culture. But, like, most places around the world, like, really have combined the idea of, like, a dance studio and a bar. Yeah. Like, for instance, like, in Korea, they call them swing dance bars. You know, they call them bars. And they don't call them, like, dance studios. And, like, they get, they have schools that, that come in there and teach inside of them, but they're called swing dance bars. And a lot of places in Europe, like, they'll have dance studios but like inside the dance studios they make sure that like they have a, a part where they can open up big and have social dances okay and they have they have they have places where people can drink and stuff and i'm not saying that it needs to be like that but like in the states like some of the places that work the best like where where i remember like being a teenager and going out to a club was tijuana's which is in irvine and and that right. was a long ass time ago and it wasn't the best place but it would definitely like put it in the forefront where a lot of people wouldn't wouldn't have seen it before. Right. And people just coming by for a drink or coming by to eat food because it was a Mexican restaurant. Half of it was a Mexican restaurant. Half of it was like a bar, like oh, stage like so type fun. area. It was. It was really, really fun back in the day. And and But that's, that's a thing to put out there. It's like not necessarily to get directly, get dancers to commit more and improve on their dancing, but to get more dancers in the door, as in more dancers started with the dance, 
is a great way to start getting more people involved. And then you, from those people, you'll get the, like a couple people that will want to commit to it and improve on it and give back to the scene. Yeah. I, I guess my, uh, my biggest question for Timothy is I wonder what his level of dancing is because whatever his level is, I is kind of indicative of how I would answer this question or like attack this, uh, situation. How so? How so? Because As I yawn of how your questions. So? Oh, your how response is so, so. boring. <laughs> because if if he is uh, knowledgeable or experienced enough to be teaching classes, yeah. then I would say like find your inspiration in investing in the scene. Mm-hmm. Because like give back, right? give back to the scene because that's what I did. Yeah. And that's what really helped drive me all those years when I was stuck in Albuquerque and feeling like I was right. going to explode. Right, right. Um, if, if he's not at that place, I, I would say like find, I don't know. Well, that's that, like combining the two things. Like, I feel like it, I feel like, I feel like at any experience level of a dancer, you can teach a class. Like, I know that's really iffy, but without thinking of historical references of the dance, without thinking of any sort of technique that is said nowadays, with just getting people out on the dance floor, if yeah. you can do a rock step, triple step, you're, you're qualified to at least get some people started in the dance. Yes. And so that, that's what I mean. It's like, it's like give back to the scene. I'm like, I'm telling Timothy, like, go find a bar, see if there's a Wednesday night that's their lowest night, and then start playing t- shit tons of swing music and have a free lesson. Yeah. You know, commit commit yourself. I mean, not, not that it has to be you, and like you can give the thought to somebody else, and then you can go there and just be a local that is like helping along with that. Yeah, you don't have yeah, to be yeah, the yeah. forefront person. Maybe maybe there's someone else in the scene that is willing to take on that responsibility. Well, and you know, that's, I, that's totally what happened to me. Like, I was not... I, I would not call myself qualified to teach. I was terrible at teaching right. and I wasn't very good at dancing yeah. either. And I yeah, started teaching all the classes and it like took a lot of years of like learning the hard way of how to teach better and how to right, approach right. Uh, the on, dance better on, on, on the job training, on the job training. Uh, right. But I think in the end it paid off, but it took like, three or four or five years to really see all that come to fruition. Yeah, exactly. It, it's and, not, and it's uh, not going to be like an immediate like <clears throat> month or two month mm-hmm. uh, reward, you know? Right. No, absolutely. And I think, I think that's the thing is like, if he's asking for people to commit and improving their dancing, uh, I think he's got to commit the time as well. Or like, he's got to get somebody to help him commit the time, you know, like a lot of these, a lot of these smaller scenes thrive because like there's definitely someone guiding other people, but there's so many people out underneath mm-hmm. helping, mm-hmm. helping. And and then another thing I just read here, it's like um, that they will go along with this kind of thought process that we're go- that we're on is that he says that the the live jazz scene here is awesome. Yeah. And and that would be another way. I mean, like if you don't want to do like teaching or organizing stuff, why don't you talk to the jazz bands and see if they can learn to play a little bit more for dancers? You know. Yeah. Three to four minute songs like. Uh, these tempos don't go so high. Play more moderate to slow tempos than you would higher tempos, especially for for uh, newer dancers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and then and then get get stoked on that. Like get get big on the on the idea that like this is a band that's like gonna play for you guys, and like have them have them work in in conjunction with the whole idea of like of the way they play on stage. Like they should be able to play with the dancers on 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 the dance floor as well. Totally, totally. And so that's, I mean, that's one of many ways. I think you hit something as well, like being an instructor, like it, maybe if he wants to like push out there and start instructing, what would you give him any advice for that? Like if you want to be an instructor and just start out in like a small scene like that? I would just, I would just reach out. Like he could even reach out to Rick and Meredith and be like, yeah. hey, I'm interested in becoming an instructor. Can I teach a drop-in lesson for you guys? Or idea, yeah. or can I sub for you guys sometime? Or yeah. can I teach a series at your dance? Yeah. Um, or maybe sub for one of them and while you know, like helping out. Yeah, helping yeah. Out and th- and they have two they have two young kids, so that would probably be super helpful to them. Yeah. I think I think I think it's like that or or 
again, on the other side, like taking your comment and being like on the other side, that like whoever he sees out there, be like, hey, you should do this. Like and encourage other people yeah. to do the things that maybe you're not willing. And that's okay. Like you don't, he, Timothy or us, like, or anybody doesn't have to be like, feel like they're obligated to start teaching or like organize things, but yeah. at least they can give the suggestions <laughs> out there and see if somebody bites, see if somebody like helps out. And then that way you can help underneath and just be like, I'm going to help you out. Like I'm going to help you bring those water jugs in. I'm going to help you set yeah. up tables or whatnot. You know? I mean, I, I would, I would put the uh, caveat on it that like, don't, don't invest in trying to teach or trying to organize if you're just trying to look for a quick fix. Like it has mm. to be an honest investment because everyone will feel your enthusiasm or your lack of enthusiasm for organizing right. or for teaching, and it'll be reflected in the attendance of that's a, uh, of the event. Yeah, that's a that's totally that's totally true. I think we I think we've seen I think I know who, who we're talking about, and and uh, I've seen people come in go and they and they they see the scene dancers come to the scene and they see the scene and they they see the knights that are out there and they go well there's missing this yeah and, and then they go out and they start doing their thing and that thing just becomes just a place for them to end up just going out and dance for themselves not for anybody else yeah you know and and that's to be fair that's totally fine like that they can go out there and dance for themselves and totally but, but don't advertise it as a sense of like bring in all these beginners and like I'm we're going to bring up all these students and and we're going to do all this thing no if you want to go out there and just have a night where like you want to play your own music or you want to play like your own jam and see if anybody else is willing to jam out with you then go for it you know like if that's something you want to do maybe you maybe it might be surprise you and might mm -hmm. you might find kindred spirits that way i mean yeah. there is a there is a, a reason other than jazz and dance that we're all come together as a big community. Totally. Like, there's got to be other totally. I, I mean, I would say like another route that I see a lot of people take is finding someone who you want to partner with or finding one person that you're willing to invest in and grow with. And then that person in, becomes your inspiration and you can start partnering together and dancing together and, and like helping each other learn and grow from there. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely. Or... Absolutely. A lot of people travel a lot. That was one of the other things that we did in Albuquerque was we traveled a ton to go out and get some fresh air, learn some new stuff, and then, mm -hmm. you know, come back to Albuquerque and, like, ride that, that high of going to an event until the next event. Right. I know a lot of people yeah. do that, too. Yeah, I mean, to go back to what you said about partnering with somebody, and, like, that's such a really good idea. I mean, like, we're... We're sort of talking to Timothy right now, like in, in, in like in through these microphones, but like anybody listening out there who feels like this, we're talking to you as well. Like if you go out and find a partner, definitely like, you know, lead and follow type partnership, like great. That's great. But also, I mean, look at the same sex, like go for go for if you're a woman, look for another woman and then and then look for more women. And then you have a chorus line. And, you know, like if you're a guy, yeah. go look for another another guy. And then you have like Alan Leon stuff, you know, yeah. like, yeah, there's all, all sorts of material out there online now that we can gain from where it can be a little more lead and follow like we were used to in Lindy Hop or a little more jazz stuff related where where you can find someone else, a kindred feeling a kindred person to to help this feeling kind of burn and, and ride that ride that high. Totally. And, and 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 definitely I remember seeing you guys out a ton back in the day. Yeah. When, when we used to when we were the kids. When we were kids. When we were young little kids. When we were young little whippersnappers. And and yeah, I mean you would tell me like you were like, you know, I don't you know, I help run, I do the stuff, you know, but I come out here for me and like I go out here and I dance you dance all fucking night. I remember that. Well, those. yeah, I had to. Yeah. I had to take advantage of that, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Not absolutely. my old but, uh, decrepit age now. No, we're... Right. we're I go to bed at a, at a late 10.30. Oof. <laughs> Jeez. That is even pushing it. Ugh. So late. Uh, so late. Um, and a, another thing, another thing is like uh, to go a different route as well is to maybe look for people that you may feel are kindred spirits in the sense of like getting committing and improving on, on their dance skills out there yeah in your small scene finding them or if maybe people you you don't know but you might think they might be able to or might maybe able to like give back to the scene and create a group yeah go out rent a rent a little dance space like once practice or twice a group week and 
Yeah, practice group. No one leads it. It's not a class. It's something that, that, that you could just be like, hey, let's work on swing outs today. And like, you know, we talk about it together. Yeah. And like, here's what I'm working on. Here's what I'm working on. Or, or it could be like, like, hey, let's just uh, have like a one hour dance. Like, let's just hang out yeah. and dance for an hour. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That too. I mean, it could be any one of those things where we're just gonna like do a bunch of different like versions. I think, I think especially if if you invite those people, I think everybody feels good about being invited to something like that. Like it totally. feels like a low key, feels like a low key little like a uh, shindig, like that only five people are gonna go to. You know, like or ten people are gonna go to. There was a time in Albuquerque where. Uh, our Tuesday night dance at the Heights Community Center was being heavily renovated. And yeah. it's it's a historic building in Albuquerque. And so they were they were like revitalizing the building essentially. Yeah. Uh, and so there was no dancing going. It was the only weekly dance at that time. So there was no swing dance at all. And so what we did was we started having house parties where we would just put on music and someone would provide, you know, even if even if only two couples could fit on the dance floor, we would just, like, someone would bring a snack that week. We'd, like, rotate through who brought the snack and yeah. just, like, dance for a couple hours and have fun. And we'd, like, hang out. Sometimes we'd dance a lot. Sometimes we wouldn't. Um, yeah. And, I mean, that's, 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 really, that's really great, uh, especially for the social aspect of it. Like, yeah. Of, 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 like, getting to know other people besides just the dance. Like, you're, you're helping to bring in other things, so you're going to talk about other things. So it just kind of in essence, forces other people, forces people to like come together and, and find common ground uh, one way or another. Yeah. I mean, as far as he, like, uh, here he talks about like getting people to commit to improving their dancing is hard. I think like people, people aren't going to want to invest in something unless they feel like it's worth investing in. And so I think, it, sure. I think, <clears throat> It's important to look at the scene and look at what the scene is offering to the community and see if whether or not it feels worth it for most people to invest in something like that, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Or another way to think about it is, like, whether they can actually invest into it. Yeah. As in, like, as in, as in like, like some people just look at it in, in a very, like, one-dimensional way, and then when people go, did you know about this dance clip, or did you know that they used to do this back in the day, or did you know, have you seen this latest clip, and, like, wait, there's more to this world? Yeah. And so they mo there's more dimensions to it, and I feel like that at that point, they can, they can do it. So, like, maybe in the essence of starting a group, like, you start a Facebook group, and you invite all the local dancers to be like, Hey, we're gonna post all these all these dance clips that we love up here, and let's talk about them. Yeah, yeah. That's like that's like I'd, a super low key way of like getting out there and like doing stuff thing without really doing much. Like getting people excited, I think. Yeah, I think that's something that is super important that I learned the very very hard way. Like it took me years to figure out that if I wanted people to invest, that I had to get them excited. And how, yeah, do you, exactly. how do you get people excited about something? Like, you're excited. That's awesome. But that doesn't mean yeah. anybody else is going to be excited about it. No, but you know what, though? Like, that's such a, I was thought you were going to go another way with that. It's like, hey, you're excited. Look at this. And then that excited person takes, look at this. And then, oh, hey, yeah, look yeah, at yeah, this. yeah, yeah. You know, like sharing videos or sharing music. Yeah. And like, but I, 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 feel, I, I, think, I think a big part of it is, like, educating yourself. Like, the better you can get, oh, yeah. the more educated you are the easier it is to get people excited about it because you are now a wealth of information. You know, like you yeah. you are the inspiration for other people to come out. Yeah. It's so funny that you said that because like I feel like me getting older now that I have a ton of knowledge. Like some people were telling me this past weekend, this this gig I did in Germany this past weekend. It's just so funny. It's like they were asking me questions about like this thing and that thing for the past. And I was like Oh yeah, I guess I was there for that, like the the style wars and all this bullshit, you know. Like I was like, yeah, oh, it's so weird. And like people are coming from me from information. And I'm like, wow, I guess I'm at that point now that I'm I'm a wealth of information, whether it be from the old old original days or whether it be from just that 15 years ago that I started at Memories, you know. Yeah, it's such an interesting thing. It's like yeah, like and and sharing that and 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 being okay with being like I don't know what that is. Why don't you look it up? Like I'm sure it's online somewhere. Someone has to know. Totally. You know, and pointing them in directions that they can they can take this uh, idea or whatever question they have, pointing them in the direction where they can possibly get an answer. Totally, totally. I think it could be very, power, very powerful. 
Um, so we talked about so we talked about kind of like instruction. We talked yeah. about maybe starting a club, maybe starting a group, a practice group, or just a dance group. Or a starting Facebook a group, group on Facebook. Yeah, getting people excited somehow. Like I think, I think no matter what, people need to be shown that how fun it is is mostly the way in, like a really good way in to get people involved and, and yeah. committed and, and working on their dancing and proving their dancing. But I, I also feel like some people are just going to be super nerds, you know? And like, I mean that in the most loving way and like super nerds is just like, oh, if you show yeah. them how, how technical this dance can be, like they can really be like, tell me more, you know? Oh, for sure. Which is totally how uh, Rick is. He, because he's like super sciencey. He's like oh, all about... Yeah. All about the technical aspect of it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I'm, and I get a lot of people. I mean, like that's the, one of the reasons why we have so many engineers in our dance scene nowadays. Like, yeah, it's it, there's a lot of there's a lot of it's not a technical things and like magical things that can't be really explained to help move somebody's somebody else's body in space, you know, or move your own body through space. Totally, totally. <laughs> uh, I mean, as far as like coming from a large scene or from a large city i you know it i i feel i feel his pain because going to a small scene like there's going to be it's i'm sure for him it's feeling like a huge lack of energy sure of course i mean yeah especially coming from la i mean you know that and so there's a lot of energy here even even at the smaller dances there's a lot of energy yeah. um and you know, I I spent a lot of time and energy being the cheerleader of the Albuquerque right. dance scene. I, I just took it upon myself to be that person. Um, and and if that's not in you, then it's gonna feel very low energy. Yeah, I I mean I can see that. I mean, there's g there's gotta be some way where you can do something without having to do anything grand. I mean, you, like you said, like you went, you went for it. You went all the way with it. Yeah. And really organized and really everything. But you know, yeah, sometimes if that's not for you, then just do something low key, but you help, still help out. You have to show people that there is another way other than just kind of, Oh, I have a Friday night free. There's yeah. going to be other people that are like minded. They just don't know that it's an option. Yeah. I mean, I and I wonder, like, I wonder if he has reached out to Rick and Meredith, or if he has, uh, like, what what he has done so far to keep himself motivated. Right. I mean, even even along with that, that gives you another idea of the of maybe he did, and maybe they're not interested. Maybe they're yeah. fine the way they are. And, you know, but like, there's always something else. Like, you you can do something else without being competitive. You don't need to be competitive in the Lindy Hop world necessarily because you're, you don't need to fight for, for, for people. Maybe you just offer something different. Yeah. That's all it is. That's all that you like. They have classes and then they have like their little dance and like you just, maybe you just have classes and then you go out to like a bar afterwards with people of age, you know, like you just go there and just be like, relax and like have it be this very social thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Totally. Uh, Keep us posted, Timmy. I yeah, wanna absolutely. I wanna hear I wanna hear more about what you have even, and haven't tried and even if you're not willing to try it, like Yeah, tell even us if that. you're not like, willing to try. Be, we're not gonna make you do anything you don't want to, and also we're not gonna, you know, ridicule ridicule you over microphones in front of people and say, Why aren't you doing that? God, Why aren't what's you wrong doing with that, you? Timmy? God. God. I love that you started calling him Timmy. <laughs> well, you know, me and Timmy we're like this. We're like best buds uh, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can see yeah, that. I, I can see, see that. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. I mean, like, you guys are always hanging out. I know that like, guy. Everything on he's Facebook. so funny. He's so, so funny. funny. Uh, but also, I'm also everybody else listening. If you have any ideas, or if you have any comments, or on this topic, yes. or you have, or you have any any anything you guys want to pass on to us, and we could talk over over two microphones across the world. From what each do you other. do in your small scene to keep things? What do you do in your small exciting? Scene? Yeah, on this topic or anything else or you want to hear us talk else. about. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and move on to the question. A quick question. question. Ye old quick question. question of the day. It's from, of the day. It's from Dan Pengeli. He says... We'll, we'll, just, we'll just say Pengeli. Tell us how to pronounce your name. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> how do you feel about clapping during comps and performances? Or... I. Well, 
Part two. <laughs> swing music is an integral part of the swing scene. Do you feel that clapping over it during performances and competitions takes away the magic of the interaction between the dancers and the music? Dun, dun, dun. 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 Um, first off, no. That's it. That's all I got to say. For both questions? No, I'm just kidding. No, I just that's feel cool. like saying no. I, it's been, it's, unto me. <laughs> it's, it's been a while since I just said no. But go <laughs> ahead, Rachel. Go for it. Go for it. Um... You know, it's funny that he asks that because, I mean, here's the thing. Well, I don't know if here's the thing. This is what, I, <laughs> this is what I've noticed. Most, most performances, like most dance performances, not in swing dancing, the dance, the greater, the greater dance world, you, sure. people aren't, like the audience is like not clapping along to the music for the dancers. Right. Okay. Um, so I wonder how that all got started in swing dancing. Is it because the music is more rhythmically attuned to clapping? That's a really good question, isn't it? How did that, how did clapping get started? Not, no, I mean, that sounded like a, like a dig, but Who no, I was serious. Who invented clapping? Who, now who's, who that, was... That who, is a who, head scratcher. Who who was the first Lindy Hooper to start the de- 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 clapping? I don't know. Uh, I think I think personally, honestly, like I think it goes back to the roots of it and the kind of ciphers or jams in general, like clapping along with a beat or like yelling at it, like responding to it. Like a call and response idea in jazz is very evident because of the African American and African tones to to the dance. Oh. And I feel in that in that sense, like it definitely has this. I, I I've said it before, and in, in the idea of like a tribe. Like giving giving energy, like there's musicians definitely throwing down the energy, and then the the uh, other people, the participants, aren't just bystanders; they're also contributing to that energy. Do you think? And I feel clapping is part of it. Do you think clapping actually not not clapping in general, but clapping during dances uh, derived from um, oh, what's the word? What's the word? Uh, the the dance uh, before the Big Apple came about, like the the circle dance that's that like slaves used to do that is know. like the original oh man i read about no, it I don't know. uh it's like the circle circle call or the calling circle it's it's something like that i can't remember the name of it but uh cuz i was doing research on the big apple uh-huh. a long time ago and i remember them talking about this dance and it and they said like part of it was like clapping and cheering and yelling throughout the throughout the dance interesting i wonder if it did come from that i mean clapping is a i mean traditionally in the sense of like a theater i guess yeah. you could say that clapping is a, is a way to show that that you liked something yeah in general you know your and appreciation like yeah, so like so like in any kind of music form, a solo takes place and then clapping happens because you show them appreciation for what they just did. Yeah. So I feel like it, maybe in some respect it started like that and then it went on to like our Lindy Hop scene to the point where it, it got uh, it got adopted to more the even beats, you know? Yeah. I mean also also I think maybe it goes even further back in the sense of like jazz, less our modern day Lindy Hop scene than just jazz where people at at um, jazz concerts would clap along with the two and fours, you know? Yeah, yeah. There's even that clip of of, uh, of Duke Ellington explaining why why you don't like clap exactly on top of the beat and you clap every other every other thing. Or I think it's meant to be a little more entertaining than it is to be educational. But at the same time, like the way he explains it, you kind of see it, you kind of feel it, and you're like, oh, it's it's less about like being on time. It's more about like just being cool and like enjoying something and just just enjoying it enough to make snap your fi- snap your fingers or clap your hands, you know? Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, so I guess that then leads you to like where or how do you how do you feel about it? When I when I feel about the the clapping during performances or comps, I think it's totally fine. I think it's a way to really give along, like I said, the tribal aspect of our whole dance. Like that maybe 
is derived from newer things, but I still feel it has the roots in 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 the more in the more um, tribal ways of way back in the day when all we had was people that that were from the same village or same fame um, continent that we were from, and we huddled together and we try to make ourselves feel better. Yeah. So it's that it's that same sort of sense of like of just giving appreciation and learning to be a community together. Yeah. And I feel like cla- like just because you're not dancing and just because you're not playing the music or being an MC or you know uh, being a DJ or being an event organizer, just being a just a being person present. attending a just being a, yeah just being present and a person attending an event, uh, you can give back in that way, and and then it becomes more of this community, more of this kind of. Um, like microorganism, you know, yeah. living thing, living thing that we're all a part of. You know? Yeah. So, okay. So I, sorry, I did some research. It's called a ring shout. A ring shout. Oh, I have heard of that. Okay. So, yeah. um, it says early in the United States, the Baptist church prohibited drumming and dancing, which ruled out most of the religious dances of African descent. Dancing was defined by many things by the Baptist church, primarily the crossing of one's feet, which was considered unholy. Uh, (laughs) Since the ring shout didn't generally use any musical instruments, only a percussion of clapping and stomping or sometimes a stick beating down on the floor and a call and response type of singing, all the while using counterclockwise dance-like movement. Uh, The ring shout usually occurred in a church after the formal worship, in praise houses, barns, or thanking God. Uh, you, you know what? Is that, is, did you say it got, it got started when when Baptist churches were like banning that? Uh, banning banning uh, dancing, which in African in a lot of African cultures is like their way yeah. of uh, yeah, of course, praising, yeah, yeah, exactly. But you know what's so funny is like all the like. I'm from my like dumb perspective. Like I think most of the Baptist churches really celebrate through dancing and singing and clapping and and enjoying themselves you know yeah yeah which is which is such a tr- which is such a trade off you know like it they started off banning it and now it's like a, a integral part of being a part of a baptist uh, community yeah what else are you reading uh what's that so what else are you reading oh sorry uh just about how like During the Civil War, uh, it was very popular in South Carolina, Texas, Georgia, and Louisiana, and its practice continued in those areas well into the 20th century, which eventually gave, uh, which eventually some say gave birth to a secular parody of the ring shout called the walk around in minstrel shows. Mm. Um, The ring shout utilizes the whole body. With the main focus being rhythms, the dancers begin by first walking in a Congo pose and one by one sliding their feet as they move, shuffling around one after the other in a circle. Yeah. So. I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm sure that was part of the, the a precursor to the Big Apple. Yeah. But, oh, uh, yeah, for sure. But I, th- I think the more important part is to get take out of that is like, it, again, it, it just it just kind of. It's it's a it's a form of praise, right? It's a form of it's a form of giving into something and communi- com- communicating this whole idea of like whether it be a praising towards God or a praising towards something that they like you something you like. I feel like it's a natural human instinct to want to make a noise when you do something or see something that you like. Yeah, uh, when you say it like that, then my response is like, I think it's really good to clap during comps and yeah. performances. Absolutely. Because you want to show the dancers your appreciation for them going up there and and putting their stuff out on the floor for you, you know? Yeah, I think the only thing I ever I ever want to say is that is that the, actually the opposite. It's like not that the audience should shut up. Like I think the audience should be more than welcome to s- yell and fucking scream all they want as an MC. Yeah. But then as like as like another person, like I want to hear the DJ be able to hear that. Okay, the, the audience is going crazy. I'm gonna turn up the music. Yeah. 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 Because I need the music to be still above all the noise. Like, no matter where I go, like, maybe it's just my ears are just going fucking dumber and dumber, but, like, I'm just like, you guys can turn this music up. I know it could be a bad thing, but, like, uh, right now we just need to fucking enjoy this moment because it's blowing up right now, you know? Yeah. No, I I mean, I would probably say that, like, 
because most of the swing dance community today is white. Uh, what? I know. Like, clapping is not really a part of white people's culture. Like, uh, like, I like, I, I mean, I beg to differ it, because it I think clapping, like clapping, the polite golf clap. Uh, I don't. Know. I wouldn't say that either. I think it's totally innate in, in human human nature to want to make noise, and clapping maybe maybe itself in its action of like putting your hands together and making a fucking loud ass noise maybe come from a different culture. But I think clapping is an innate thing about about all humans. You but think I'm so? sorry. I totally. I'm sorry. I totally fucking cut you off. I'm so no, sorry. No, 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 no. I mean, I I think that that's a valid point. I I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I have no idea. That, I think that's it is. a good I mean, question like, too. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's true. Like, is is it is it a, a cultural thing? Is it yeah something that's really learned? Is it something that's like just copied? Is it you know is it human and innate to just want to make noise and like you just want to like slap? Like it's like it's like knee slapper. Like if you, if you tell a joke, like you slap something. Like it's such a I don't that's know. I think true. it's a, that's a true. human that's thing. True. You know. Um, um, yeah, I yeah, I mean I don't I don't know, but yeah. but I get my point. But we're 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 digging we're digging real deep into this my, question. I here. guess my point to that is that uh, I've noticed more and more that people are unwilling to clap to the music during a competition or during a performance, especially especially at like a big competition weekend like ILHC when there's like twenty. 20 people in a division, like the the, cla- the open classic or whatever. Yeah. Like by the time you get to like couple number 15, people don't want to clap anymore. Yeah. You know what though? Like that's, uh, while I will agree with you 100%, I've seen that as well. But at ILHC, it's a different, different animal because most people who go there are either competing or ready to be inspired. So they're just like, they're yeah. just like ready. Yeah. Their like hands are like are like a few inches away from each other, and they're just like waiting for that moment for them to clap. And they're like, they're like, but they're just watching and like learning and like seeing like this is the next cool thing. And like, uh, oh shit, here's time, my time to clap. Okay, song's over. Yeah, you know. Yeah, for sure. For I sure. feel like it's I feel like it's a little bit like that too. But uh, I don't know, man. Like being being able to go to a lot of different communities and a lot of different cultures uh, with this subculture of Lindy Hop, like, I feel like there's still a love for music and there's still a love that mus- this idea that, like, I am still going to make sound for the musicians, at least. Yeah. And I, I love that that's still going. Like, for instance, like, last weekend, while it's it's, it's kind of like a uh, two different ends of the spectrum, where, like, Lithuania and Vilnius and, and for Harlem, Man, the fucking audience wants so much more live music. They have live music all the way up till five a.m. Usually, but the thing is, is like they want more. They always want more, and that's, that's too fine. much like, live music. That's too much live music. You can't have that," said the white person. <laughs> uh, excuse me, but um, yes. Uh, my name is Rachel. Very white. I feel like Linda. Linda should be better. Linda. Rachel's a pretty white name, or is I, it? Uh, I don't think so. It's a good name. It's a it's a good name. But but uh, yeah. So like they make fucking shit tons of loud ass music, loud ass sound back to the band, and the band really fucking feeds off that. Yeah. And last weekend, last weekend I was I was in Germany, and in Ger- and like not saying all Germany, but like Bavaria especially, like they 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 are. They want more, but they're not willing to like make the sounds. They're just willing to make like the clapping sound. It's really funny, and I think it's a German thing. Probably but, like, as soon is. As they start. They start. They start clapping a lot, right? They yay, clapping all at different times, right? Yay, and then all of a sudden they go yay, 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 yay. yay, 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 yay. We're yay, clapping yay. all together. Well, that happened we're in Sweden too. Together. We're clapping all together. Yeah, that happened I think in it's Sweden a European too. Thing. It was. A, I think it's a European yeah. thing. I told you about that, right? When you guys were out there, yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. watch, watch, watch how they clapped into the, yeah. But you know, I've noticed that a lot of people in the U.S. have started doing that too. Oh, interesting. Okay, so maybe again, maybe I mean, it's just it's, just, it's it, not a cultural thing. It's just going around all the world. I mean, it could be because, yeah, it could have started in Europe, and then more Europeans are traveling to the yeah. U.S. and it kind yeah, of spread sure. here. I mean, I don't know. Sure, but um, either, either way, it's just it's just it's 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 less about the way it happens. It's more about like how much noise that comes out of people. And, I, yeah. and what I'm looking for is like, is like, if you really want that band to come out, you're going to make a shit ton of noise. If you're just going to make the bare minimum, like that's, 
that's not it, man. Like if, if you really want a company and you want a clap for somebody, you want to do it because you want to make them feel good. Like for instance, like a, another another way to think about this, like a Cannes Film Festival, like Cannes Film Festival, Wh- which you know? we've both been to. Yeah, obviously. I mean, obviously. I mean, it's my fifteenth. It's it's my fifteenth year. Obvi. Uh, but no, but you always hear about like how a movie will 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 play there, and then like it gets a twenty minute standing ovation. Oh yeah, yeah, like, yeah. How the fuck does that happen? I have never in my life seen a seen 20 a minute twenty minute ovation. ovation. Yeah. Yeah. Unless can you unless imagine it was that, just clapping for twenty minutes straight? I know. Like, what if what if we just stay quiet for twenty minutes on this podcast and just imagine clapping? I mean, we're not going to do it, but... <laughs> Man, you broke way faster than what I expected you to. I know, I know. I, know. I, look, I, oh. I, looked, I, I looked around for something to play with, and I couldn't find anything. Oh, you got uh, uncomfortable. <laughs> that made you a little nervous? Yeah. A little nervioso no. over there? Yeah, a little bit. I'm, I'm a nervous boy. I'm a nervous boy. I'm but, a nervous boy. Boy, I think I think the closest I think the close you're a nervous boy. I think the closest I ever came to seeing a 20 minute standing ovation was like the times I've been to like a a like a very formal dance production like in a theater. Yeah, and, and like like Alvin Ailey, like I went every time I seen Al, Alvin Ailey, they end it with their spectacular uh, 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 revelations piece, and it's such as like huge like praise, like we were just talking about like a like a ring. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's so great, and it's all it's all about like southern like traditions of gospel and and then you clap and they bow, and then the the men bow and then the the women bow, and you're still clapping, and then like the main performers bow, and then like the choreographers come out and and they bow and you're still clapping, and then they they kind of go away, and then they're everybody's still clapping, and they come back out and they do the exact same thing again, all the men come up, all the women come up, and all the choreographers and then all the main dancers, and then like maybe like one or two people at a time that had only two pieces together, you know like that was it, and that was like. Oh, but they made us do it. Like we kept clapping and they came out and did it again. So it would yeah. be really fucking rude if we stopped clapping. Yeah. So you keep going. So I, I, I kinda I kinda just wanna say that like if if it's if it's wanted, just come back out and that'll be like even fucking more. Like but, all the other musicians. But the back difference out, you know? the difference with all of your examples here though is that people are clapping after the performance. True. They're not True. clapping on right. beat to the music during the performance. Yeah. And I mean, okay, so, I guess, so here's, I guess, here's I guess, another okay, way. Okay, okay. Go for it. Well, I guess I, the only reason why I brought that whole thing up is because uh, just based on the re- on the research that I've done and from, like, the music that I've heard, it seems like black culture and African-American culture in general is a lot more expressive right. than, like, white people culture. Like, white people yeah. don't like to share their emotions, they're all yeah. suppressed inside, whereas like, yeah. like black culture lets it out more, which is why That's like, true. like in those videos from them dancing in the '30s and '40s, they're like they're so expressive, right? They're so expressive. Well, I mean, that that and a couple other things, but for sure, like it's it's something it's something that it's culturally innate. But uh, but, but to, that's to give what it, I wonder. To give it to give it to give it another perspective, like more of the sense of during performances. Yeah. yeah. And, and and I'm taking this in more of like a only musicians way. Like Lindy Focus, like obviously since the last couple of years since they've been doing like the tribute nights. Yeah. To 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 musicians and band band leaders, they uh I mean it's been more of like a concert up front than it is like a dance. Totally. Where totally. people are just like standing in front and like digging it and like getting down to it, but like it's more like a concert where people are standing up in front of the stage and yes. enjoying it. And so, like, I think that's one way where that works. Like, where clapping along works, you know? Yes. But but uh, most of those people aren't clapping along through most of the songs. The whole thing. Yeah, of course thing. not. When they, f- when they feel it. Like, feel every it. now like, and then, someone will be, like, snapping their finger or right. clapping a little bit. Right. Right, right, right. Of course. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to say like they're going to do it the whole the whole thing, but like there is moments where they feel it and the band is giving it to them and they give it right back to the band. And like yeah. that's what I'm saying, when it's when it's organic. Now, when it comes down to like swing dance performances, I think it's really I think it's really good. I don't really need it. I could care less if 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 an audience is clapping for me or not, but I th- I mean, I surely enjoy it. I love that, but like during the performance, I think it's really good 
for an audience member to acknowledge that there's dancers in front of them and to even clap just a little bit every once in a while, it means a lot. Because yeah. maybe the performance, may, because again, it, this is where it gets in this whole cyclical kind of idea of this uh, um, community or a microorganism where like these people are performing right in front of you and maybe they're having a tough time. Maybe it's their first time. Maybe it's, you know, something went wrong or maybe they're not feeling the best. And like you can give them a little more extra feeling to go out there and perform their best just by clapping along with them. Yeah, you're giving them love. Yeah, exactly. And then they're going to give so, you love when you're up there. Yeah, exactly. And I, I mean, I can't, I can't remember a time. I, I honestly cannot remember. Like going down to like his last question, Dan's last question, where it's like, where it's like, does it take away, f- does it take away the, does, does, <laughs> does, does it, it takes, it, does it? Ugh, fuck, I can't read anything. It's, does it? it's, I'm so tired. Takes away the magic of the interaction between dancers and the music. I mean, I've never been a part of any kind of contest, whether it's been live music or, or recorded music or performance or a showcase or something where claps have taken away from anything. I have never felt that. I have been in a performance where uh, the audience was specifically told to not clap. I know. I saw that one, yeah. Yeah, but it was because we were dancing in 7-8 yeah, and not... Four four, so yeah. I would like that's the only time I've ever where it's ever been like maybe we should make a point of asking people to not clap because the song is already right. so hard to dance to. Right, right. I mean, many, but even then, like you asked them not to clap, and that was not a problem. Like the right. thing is, is like so then still clapping has never been a problem during a performance or, or anything I've no. ever seen. I mean, and, like, but I, but that's so, that's so true. Actually, we, we might put that down in the comments after this. Like we'll put that, that video up the, oh, from yeah. Mini Focus, right? Yeah. Yeah. Cause it was, it was a really good routine and I really enjoyed it. And there was a lot of people in there that are, that are our friends that I'm like, yeah, we should, we should send this out there again. So that'd be really good. They were our friends. Yeah. So, I think I think at the end of it, like you know, how do I feel about clapping during comps? Do it if you want to, but mean it. And then like uh, during during competitions and performances, uh, whether I feel like it, it it distracts from the interaction between dancers and musicians, nope, never felt that. I mean, I think it's just like goes back to ye old golden rule: do unto others as you want others to do unto you. Like, if you're going to be up there performing and putting your heart out on the floor, you want people to be clapping for you, right? Yeah, absolutely. Like, you want to yeah, feel sure the yeah. energy and the love of everybody in the room. Yeah. I don't need it, but yeah, it'd be nice. It's nice. It's Mikey doesn't nice. need it, so don't give it to him. No, I don't, because, like, let's put it this way. Like, there's some performers that go up there, and they're like, they're like give me energy. And I'm like, fuck you. I, I, if I'm not creating my Whoa. own energy, you know, it's like, it's like <laughs> if I'm not creating my own energy... To, to go out there and perform something with all my heart and they don't feel it, I can't make them and ask for it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right, 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 right. You know, like, where are you at? Like, putting your hand next to your ear and go, let me hear you. But, like, okay. Oh, I fucking hate that bullshit. Well, yeah, that's stupid. But, like, when you come yeah. out on the floor and you have a ton of energy and people start clapping for you, it only drives your energy up more. Yeah, of course. But, again, like you said before, we're talking about during comps and performances. Yeah. So it's it's during the action of dancing where I'm like, hey, if you guys aren't feeling it, great. Like you don't have to feel it. That's that's, that's fine. true. That's true. Yeah, I don't need it from them. If I'm if I can't create it between me by myself out there, or me and a partner, or me and a group of people, if we can't create it, then that's our bad. That's our thing. We need to learn how to do that better. Yeah. And I've definitely been a, I've definitely been at performances where it did not create as much energy as I hoped it would have, and I was like, well, that's my fault. You know? Me too. I'm not gonna put on an audience where they're unsuspecting. <laughs> Me too. They're not. They, yeah. So, so yeah. So, what's your bright side today, Rachel? Rachel. Oh my gosh. Um, I don't know. I want me to go first. Or yeah, go? yeah. Why don't you go first? My bright side is I have a weekend fucking off this weekend. That yeah. is my fucking bright side. I'm gonna I'm gonna spend like Saturday or Sunday. I can't decide which one. Maybe Sunday and take the day off completely and just watch Westworld all day long. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be so. I'm gonna. It's gonna smell so bad in my room. Uh, um, can I tell you a little secret? Tell me a little secret. Uh, there was a casting posting for Westworld that I thought yeah. about applying to. It was yeah. six hundred dollars a day. Holy shit! But I was gonna have to be completely naked on camera. 
all day do long. Do it. Do it. I say I, do it. I uh, Well, it already came and went, and I really thought oh. about it. I was. I even went to Brett, and I was like, do you think I should do this? And he was like, he was like, well, do you want to? And I was like, I, I feel like I would be okay <laughs> doing it right now, but then like, I don't know how I would feel being naked all day long on set. And right, he was right, like, right. well, you know, most of those people who are naked are like the robots who are sitting there in the yeah. labs. They're just like sitting yeah. or standing. And when you're around everybody else that who's naked, like it might not be such a big deal. And I was like, I'll think about it. And then I like forgot about it. And then two days went by yeah. and then, and then it was gone. Oh man. That would have been hilarious if you had never told anybody and you did it. And, and, it just and showed then up everybody and like, saw and they were like, wait, is that Rachel's hoo-ha that I see? Is that, is that Raquel? Is that Raquel Verde? Raquel and, and her hoo-hoo? <laughs> and her little titty tatties? <laughs> so, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I, oh, I could just, Imagine going, 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 holy fucking shit. It's a fucking Snapchatting the shit out of it. That's what I, I've done. And that's the thing. Like, I, I know a lot of people who watch Westworld. So if they saw me naked, like, how would I feel about that? I mean, I guess you'd it'd feel, be all right. You'd, you, you'd, you'd feel like damn proud. Like, yeah. Be yeah. like, I got 600 bucks out of that, yo. What yeah, now? And I, and, and I got that mole checked out at the same and time. And I got that mole checked out. <laughs> <laughs> it's a okay. <laughs> Do you so want to check out side? my mole cluster? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you've already seen it now. <laughs> oh man, um, I don't know. My bright side is like, I don't know. I like. You, I was, you hope you you hope you find the bike. <laughs> well, I mean, here's the thing. Is like it totally sucks that the bike was stolen and Brett only had it for a few months. Oh, that sucks. I know, but but like, I hope that whoever took it needs it more than we needed it. Right. You know, I mean, that's that's and a like, that's a real positive way to look at it. Absolutely, and I agree. also like it's just a it's just a thing. Like w- we can replace yeah. it, and. I guess I'm grateful that we're in a place in our lives where we can replace it. You know, like last yeah, time yeah, Brett had a bike stolen, he was like, shit, I can't afford to buy a new bike. Right. Nor am I willing but, to. But. But. Growing up, A, eh? one of the few things that's advantageous. But. Fuck that guy who stole it. Sorry. Fuck that guy who stole it. <laughs> uh uh uh. Uh uh uh. I mean. It could have been a homeless person. Still there's like some homeless people. Who stole it. There's like some homeless people who uh, live down by the river on my block. Okay, but fuck those people who made those. Fuck those people that made those. Fuck those people. I mean, who like made those not cool, homeless. right? But like, I'm okay. Brit's okay. It's not like our house got right. broken into again. Right. Does that so. does this help you? Does this help you? Like just saying, like, but it's okay because I, you know, I'm wearing a, this. You know, does that help you feel better? It does. Okay. Good. I mean, it kind of helps me feel better. Okay. I mean, okay. I, it's, it long, doesn't. It doesn't help long, me. It doesn't help long, me to like stew in it. You know. Yeah, I I know, but I'm, but you are kind of stewing in it before. But like, as I was saying, it's like yeah. if, is this, if this if all this positivity helps you get out of that that stewing phase and like feel good feel good about the situation after after the fact because there's nothing you could do about it right yeah 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 you've done everything you can so as long as you're doing that that's fine it's not as, not as long as you're like well here's the here's whatever and then just <sighs> stewing in it still you know well yeah that's true i mean i yeah. like that i like i'm also grouchy cuz i've been under a lot of stress recently and so i'm like not right. uh that's like the bike thing is like only a part of what i'm feeling but I do get to go I on vacation in a couple of weeks, which I am very excited about. So the bright side is vacation. Vacation! Is. That'll be my Guess bright what? side. I, I'm going to come home soon. Really? Yeah, in two months. Oh, two months? I mean, give me a break. <laughs> I know, but you... Did you hear that? Really? <laughs> okay. So, Brett and I, <laughs> we've been watching The Keepers. Right. We were on episode six last night. It got really intense. Like I, it got real. It got real. I cry probably almost every episode. We finish the episode, 
and it ends on like this cliffhanger. And Brett turns to me and goes, that's the end of the series. And I burst out crying. I just burst into tears and started <laughs> sobbing. He couldn't even hold the joke for a, a second. He was like, I'm just <laughs> kidding. There's one more. <laughs> oh, shit. And I was like, you can't do that to me. Oh, I my need God. more. Emotional wreck over there. Jesus. It, it was true. That, that's but that's one of the reasons why I like these shows so much is that I get so emotionally invested. The, the like the like true crime ones, right? Yeah, they yeah, really yeah, for sure. And there's like there was one episode that was really scary. They had like some really scary images, and I like it was so scary that the next morning I thought about it and it scared me so much that I didn't want to leave my house for work. Like I was Jesus. afraid to walk out the front door to go to work. All right, so everybody listening, you need to watch The Keepers. It's and, so good. And be scared to never leave your house again, apparently. It was so good. Uh, so your your bright side is is vacation. Got it. Vacation. <laughs> vacation! I'm never going to watch that goddamn Vacation! Is it... So, like, I, I mean, I just... I, just, I watched something serious. I can't remember what it was, like, and I was like, I need to watch something, like, laughable. And I was like, Kimmy Schmidt! <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, like, after we watch The Keepers, we always watch Entourage. Yeah, exactly. Something like light, like, like oh my cleanse, god, I need I need chocolate. The palate. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. All right, everybody, we're all done here today. But you know we're where done. to find us on iTunes. You can find us on SoundCloud. Send us the questions, I'm, please. Exactly. Comment on the Facebook page. Like the Facebook page and, and rate and review us on iTunes. Uh, it's gonna be real fun. I got a couple. It's I got be real five. Fun. I got I got five. I got five videos of our first five. Uh, podcasts which are real bad oh my but, gosh <laughs> but they're gonna come out uh on on youtube i'm gonna put them on uh my other channel so i'll put them on there and then we could post those too so if you're listening somewhere where you don't have your iphone or something you can listen on, on the youtubes yeah 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 all right so that's it for today so from us to you adios Bye. uh you you changed it wait you said adios are you kidding me I am honestly upset right now. I'm sorry. You better say I, you you better say bye. bye. You better say bye. Bye. By the bye. end. <laughs> Click. <laughs> we're we're going to have words. We're going to have words after this. Bye. Bye. <laughs>